I like the green, Cami. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Very pretty. Everybody's mm -hmm. got it for ten dollars. My kind of place is a Target. Old Navy. Old Navy. Mm -hmm. You know. I always see things on their website that I love, but then when I go to the store, it's either so packed full of people, I get overwhelmed, or they have nothing in my size. Yeah. So, yeah. Just so everyone knows. Start shopping for SAF. I okay. know. Start preparing for that. It's a good excuse to. Yeah. Cute stuff. We're all looking forward to Society of American Florists for sure. SAF. Yeah. So anybody who's listening, we'd love to see you there for sure. We for will sure. all be there. We will. Yay. All right. We've got Andy Knowles. I see you. Andy's got a bad cold. He got it from his kids and he feels like the so thanks oh. for showing up. <laughs> it's right. Christy Clay. Hey Clay. Janet. Leslie, Mark Marazzo, Stacey Edwards, Stephanie, Susie, Wendy, a lot of people here, a lot of names. Oh, and Stephanie's chatting and saying her and she and Janine will be at SAF. Yay. I've never met Stephanie in person. Oh, Stephanie's a hoot. Yeah. Stephanie's <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm so we love spending time with Stephanie. Yeah. yeah fun. She's a lot of, a lot, a lot of fun um all right let's give it maybe one more minute we we have a lot to cover oh that's my timer that's my timer time to go yep it's uh i created a timer to send out a five minute email reminder uh-huh because the uh we forgot to add the text reminder column in the webinar registration so that's what that was, but it was snooze. I forgot I hit snooze. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, well, you're a little late. A little late. That would be my fault because I had to make the webinar since you're right. Are. But which was probably more my fault because it's my job, but I didn't do it before I left. So we can split the blame. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. So I also went back and added um, Canada because I learned that the hard way a few I don't know, six months ago, all of my Canadian shops couldn't log in because we didn't have the right information. And so anyway, okay, well, let's go ahead and get going because I know these people are busy. Uh, we do have it recorded so we can send out to those who need it, right? We'll send it out to everybody. Yep. Yep. Sounds great. Well, we know this is a hot subject. We appreciate everybody taking the time to be here today. And we know that there is a cry for help out there is what we'd like to say, because there's so many people who are looking to have others join their team. Right, Lori? We hear this all the time. Yeah, it is um, the number one question that I receive, whether it's on a phone call or in our Facebook group. Um, and you know, when you and I did the, we were interviewing SAF members for their, for our podcast, I asked them this question, what's their number one? And they said the same thing. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a dire situation. It feels like mm -hmm. um, for some people, but I think some of the things we have today might be really helpful with some solutions. So well, and we know that something has to be loosening up a little bit because now that bonus pay that everybody was, was staying home to get for their unemployment is running out. I think at this point, it's like 24 states that have let that go and it's expiring and more all the time. So hopefully that means there's going to be more people out looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. We all know that an experienced floral design job is hard to fill because there are very few and far between experienced floral designers. So we've got some solutions here. We've got um, some really good ideas. So let's, let's get moving on that. Right. And as, as we're going, if questions pop in your mind, feel free to put them in the chat. I know a lot of you put um, in, when you registered, you added a question, which I so appreciate. So if you see me looking over here a lot, it's because I'm looking at that registration and um, probably going to share those questions with Fonda. So that's great. Yep. So what you have to decide is, you know, when you're advertising for the help wanted, do you want to advertise 
specifically for an experienced designer. We know those are hard, harder to come by, but there are still a few out there who are looking for a job and maybe you're going to entice them by having everything written down clearly what you're looking for. The one we're seeing is, you know, it's, you're going to do daily orders, wedding, sympathy, you know, from pretty much from A to Z. And so it's really outlining that. Or you have something, as you see at the top one, just join our team. We're looking for some reliable, skilled, productive candidates. So you have to know what's right for you. Um, when Lori and I were talking, we were like, you know what? Just keep it so that people would go, yeah, that sounds like me. I love flowers. I'm a little bit creative. No, actually, I'm really creative. Mm -hmm. I want to learn and I really am a hard worker you can train that person to be a really valuable part of your team. So like Lori said, don't, don't send a resume, have them stop in. Right. So when we were going through this, <clears throat> I was, I was telling Vonda about some of the local stores here where I live and even some franchises um, like Jimmy John's. I mean, they have a, uh, their ad is very short. It doesn't go into a lot of detail, but it's, it shows you a little bit of the culture of their shop. Like maybe it's funny or maybe, you know, it's got a little personality behind it, but it says stop in and get an application. We'd love to meet you. I think that would be really helpful. Number one, a lot of you guys don't have the capacity to do online applications. I guess you can do it if you've signed up with someone like Indeed or Monster or any of those, whatever all those are, but have them come in because you're gonna be able to probably know within the first five minutes of conversation before you even hand them the application, if there's a type of chemistry there that's gonna work among the culture of your shop. Yeah. So then the other question is, okay, where do I post that ad? How do I reach out to try to find somebody to come into the store? So we've kind of been talking about this, Lori. Yeah, so here's, <clears throat> these have all come from flower shop owners that are either Flower Click members or shop owners that we know that have, have found good employees from any of these resources. So the obvious one is social media. There's pros and cons. Um, we have some people that get, really great feedback. And, and this is not just posting on your personal page. It's posting on your shop's business page um, and on your shop's Instagram. I keep, again, you're going to want to keep it short and concise. And maybe that one says, you know, stop in or PM me for more details. Cause you're going to want to take that conversation offline. You're not going to want to be having it in the comment section for the whole world to see. Um, Indeed.com. Somebody wrote uh, in the registration. In the registration, they wrote a question about it and said they've been utilizing Indeed.com. And I know a lot of people that have had good luck. There is. I'm. I'm not a Indeed.com guru. I don't know all of the nuances of it, but I know there's free and then there's a paid version. And the majority of the people that I talk to that have received good quality applications that turned into a viable employee, they did the paid version because you can edit the filters down a little more specifically to where you're not getting like thousands of applications in only three. Because the person I was talking to who said, you know, anytime you click on those, you're going to pay for them. Mm -hmm. So this helps narrow that down. So other things, Garden Club. Susie, I don't know if you're on here or not, but this is one place where she reached out to her local garden club in Florida, and she ended up getting two women that are phenomenal. They're just naturals, and they help. They're seasonal. They're both older, and they just want to be seasonal, and that worked for her. Um, reach out to your local chamber of commerce. Make sure if they have, a lot of times, chamber of commerce have a link that you can post a classified, maybe it's a little bit of money, maybe it's free for 30 days, I don't know. Utilize your local stuff. Um, Vonda, this was yours, the design class. It is, I mean, if you are offering design classes or if you have, even in this last year, and you have a list of people that have attended those classes or you're just having one come up, always be mindful of that person who's a little bit creative and ask them, you know, gosh, you are really good at this. Would you be interested in a career in floral design? Right. That's right. really a good, 
good place. The worst to they're going to do is say, nah, <laughs> I just want to come to your class. Right. But you never know. Maybe they didn't even think they had the capacity to do something like that until you said, hey, you've got quite a flair. You know, maybe you want to do this. Plant the um, seed for sure. Right. Plant that seed. Speaking of planting seeds, look around at your employees that are really good at their job. They have good character. They're always on time. They're good with your customers. Have one-on-one -on -one conversations with those people and say, hey, do you know anybody? Do you have a friend? Do you have a mom? Do you have like, what? Do you know anyone that might want a part-time job? Make sure they know you are looking because gosh, if they're as this great, well-rounded person, chances are they align themselves with other great, well-rounded people. So don't be afraid to ask your employees. Um, and that also, you know, touches right on word of mouth. Pass it along. Talk to your local, other local retailers. Um, someone said that they needed delivery got drivers, they actually tapped into the pizza place, you know, and started kind of sharing delivery and then ended up, some of them liked flowers shot better and moved on over. So you never know. Bonnie, you were going to talk more of the details. You actually reached out to SAF. They have a really cool classified section online. They do. Yeah. And I think it's fairly new, but Society of American Florists has a classified. Um, it's $20 for 30 days to advertise for a designer or a delivery person, whoever you're looking for. And I guess it's visible to everyone. So that's a really good possibility too. They also, you can post on Floral Management Magazine um, for yep. an ad and you can put it in there if you're looking for somebody, you know, um, because that publication goes out to even more people. So mm -hmm. those are some possibilities is, you know, to look at Society of American Florists for their classified. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about hiring the right person. We've kind of given you an idea on, you know, how to place an ad or what that might look like and some places to look. But then what happens when you are talking to that person, you know, you want to hire that right person because you need to set yourself up for success. We're going to touch on salaries and incentives, which really is the elephant in the room. Yeah. Nobody yeah. really wants to talk about that. Then move into the onboarding process, successful training solutions. And at the end, we're going to talk about um, a checklist on things that maybe you can outsource to take some things off your plate and not feel like you have to do it all. And they're just questions you ask yourself to get that checklist for you. So let's just start with hiring the right person. Lori? So this, one of the biggest mistakes, um, I think owners and managers do, and I mean, we all do it. When you're overwhelmed, you're maxed out, you're understaffed, you're all of the things, and you know you need to hire someone. You reach out, you hire someone, but you don't have a clearly defined role. Some of you have reached out and said, I need a designer, I need a designer. I get that. So is make sure the role you're looking for is specific. You need to have bullet points on, is it just a designer or are you the type of shop that needs a designer, but they might also need to be able to answer the phone, maybe even delivery. I mean, depending on your shop. So write down exactly what you need. And what you might find is you have so much, it might be divided up into two separate roles or it could be consolidated into one. So make sure you have it written down exactly what you need because you're going to need to clarify it to the person that's interviewing for that job too. If they just want to be a designer, but in your mind, you're like, oh, and they're also going to do this other stuff, but you don't tell them up front, you're going to have an upset designer <laughs> that well, might not like- have somebody who's going to stay, right? If well, you don't not gonna stay. define the expectations in this beginning process, you're setting yourself up for failure and the employee as well. Right, exactly. So make sure you know exactly what it is you need. And if you're not- clear on it yourself, have a little meeting with the employees you do have and say, okay, what, what do we feel like we're missing? You know, let's each 
take a minute and say, oh, I wish we had someone that could work on this. Or I was write all that down and figure out, okay, this is how you, you this is how you're going to create this role. The other thing you might do is if, if one of your employees is like, I wish somebody would work on this, you might have a quiet, timid little employee over here. That's like, Hey, I, I like photography. I'd like to try that. Awesome. You do it. Check it off my list. So have a meeting. I know it's hard because time and everything, but have that and help define what is it? How can we find our perfect person? We always joke around here, like what's your perfect avatar? What's your perfect, if you could create your perfect avatar for an employee, what does that look like? Um, here's just examples, you know, do you need a designer or do you just need a good design assistant that can kind of multitask? Do you need a salesperson or do you need someone that really needs to focus and do the majority of your delivery driving? They don't really need to have them on the phone. Like figure all that stuff out before you even look for the person to fill the role. And then you need to know the skills and the traits for each one of those positions. So if I'm looking for a designer, do I want something that's high, somebody who's already highly skilled and is a designer, which again, we know is a little difficult to find, or do I just need somebody with a desire to learn? They work well with others. I can tell their personality kind of jives with my shop um, and that they really take initiative and they take instruction. So a lot of times you'll, you'll be able to figure that out when you are really have them face-to-face -face and ask them a few questions to be able to, to pull out that information. And so when you're doing someone like a salesperson, a lot of these, they mix, right? Clearly, whether it's a designer or a salesperson, you want someone that works well with others. And clearly, if you're a designer and a sale or a salesperson, you both need to be open-minded, willing to learn, do these kind of things, but <clears throat> try to narrow it down even more on what's even, you know, what more the details. So salesperson, number one, desire. I want a job. I want to do this. I think this is going to be great. Personality, how they treat you even in an interview, all friendly, open to learn, takes init initiative. That is one thing that I have had so many conversations with shops that are frustrated with maybe it's a new hire. I just had one a few weeks ago because they ended up hiring someone that is that type of person that will do what she's supposed to do, but once that's done, they will just stand there and wait to be told to do the next thing. I'm sure this person will shine in some job, but in a flower shop, you guys can't afford to have employees that just sit and wait for the next thing, thing to be told. Like it's gotta be someone that has initiative. It's gotta be somebody that's like, hey, we don't have phones not ready. You know what? I need to go dust that stuff. I'm gonna go over here, you know? And so in that interview or when you're talking to them, have them kind of tell you stories about, you know, have you ever created a new poster for your last job? Did you, you do a sale? What did you do? You'll listen, you'll hear a lot about them and know the type of personality they are. And number three, have a process ready before you hire them. This is so important. Lori, you've read so many articles on this and success that happens when they do have this in line? Yeah, I was just telling Vonda this morning, actually, I came across this little tidbit of people, statistics show um, when you have an onboarding process in place before you hire, you can train your new person, whatever the job is, this was a little more vague. It was not specific. It shouldn't take you longer than a month compared to business owners that had no concrete onboarding process. It was more of a, well, just kind of watch what I do. And then we'll get to you. And again, it took up to eight months before that employee felt like, okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I mean, one month, 
or eight months. So if you think of our industry, the difference in that, think of how much not only time is wasted on the employee standing around waiting to be taught next and you having to come and do it or whoever, but the amount of money because you're having to pay that person the whole time. Right, right. So you have to know who's going to be responsible for training that person. You maybe have the task, which we're going to cover here in a little while, have that whatever the, the task or the new training that they need to have, who's responsible for it? And how many hours per day are they responsible for spending with that person? And then if they're spending time with a new person, who's doing their job? So it's one of those things that you really have to think through it so you know what needs to be done to set the person up for success. You have to have that list of the need to know, the NTO, which is the need to know. What do they need to know to, like Lori said, be successful from, you know, within that first month instead right. of that. And then what about the checkpoints? Who's going to be checking in on them? And at, is it every day? Is it every second day, every week? You know, what is that checkpoint look like? Yeah. So to just even elaborate a little bit on the last one, moving in to hire the right person, watching their behaviors, that's why someone's got to do it. Someone that first three months, probably, or however long you have in your shop, someone's got to teach and train, but then you have to observe to say, okay, I, I did everything I can. Are they applying all of their new, new skills correctly? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? Are they making a lot of mistakes? Are they knocking it out of the park? Whatever. Someone's got to be in charge of that. And what happens is a lot of times the owner's trying to do it all because that's how you business owners are. You just, you just do it because you've had to. And so you're going in and you're trying to train these people and teach them. And you're also trying to put out this fire. You're also trying to get this bridal consult going. And oh my gosh, a family came in that needs some sympathy stuff. So you're doing it all. Something's going to get lost. And it's probably going to be the training and the employee. So my suggestion is if you're not in a space where you can actually do the work, for the first month or whatever, pick an employee, pick someone you trust that is really good at their job and say, I need you to do this. I need you to be the mentor or the teacher or whatever you want it to be. And then going back to Vonda's NTOs, need to knows, here's, here's three red flags. I need you to come talk to me about if these happen mm -hmm. and whatever, that's going to be different for for everyone. If they're, if you catch them in the back drinking a fifth of Jack Daniels, come get me or whatever your, whatever your red flags are, which I think at this point, there are some shops that are like, well, long as I get their work done, it doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> but whatever your red flags are, let that person know. So that's the only time they really need to come and say, Hey, I'm going to need your help on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just watch those actions and attitudes. I mean, that's pretty much it. And even if you have reassigned that to another employee, you as an owner can kind of be observing that. You can watch the actions. You can hear the attitude that's going on. And oh, you right. want to watch right. that. Oops, where are we going? Something's happening to my computer. Sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. There we go. The elephant. So here are the elephant in the room, you know, everyone wants to know how much do I pay? You know, what is the price we have to be to com be competitive? Lori and I were talking again earlier today and really within the last week, you know, with the incentives that are being paid to new employees, what you had one at Target and Taco Bell, all of those places. Yeah. So um, and this, this whole conversation really started when in our shop talk on Tuesday night, uh, well, Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night with our flower click members. And, you know, some of them are like, I can't compete with these places. Like I was, I ran into target the other day to get a prescription and they were like, we pay $15 an hour. We have a 
I don't know what their signing bonus, it wasn't, it said signing bonus. It didn't say exactly how much. And I thought, gosh, you know, and so I was sharing that with you mm-hmm. and we started thinking, but you can compete you and can. it's not going to cost you as much as it's costing target if you do it right. Right. And it depends on your market. You know, maybe another target's only paying 13, another oh, one right. paying 18. So it depends on what's going on in your area. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, the job market is different all over the place. When I looked on SAF, Society of American Floors Classified, they had a, a ad for a designer in Georgia and their pay was $24,000 a year for this designer. So you break that down and it comes out to about $11.50 an hour. So doesn't seem like a lot, right? It's like, woo, but somewhere else their minimum might be $18 an hour. So again, depending on that, you wanna get this person committed to you and paying minimum wage might not do it. But the key is let them know that you have incentive bonuses and it's based on their productivity. If they're producing a lot of flower arrangements per hour, which equate to more than you would have to be paying. So it's 10 times their wage. And we can talk about this off if anybody wants more information. If they're producing more than their wage, you can pay them a bonus. If they're selling more, like they're, instead of an average sale of 35 or $40, they're selling something at 70, 80, $90, which so many of our flower click members are after they've gone through sales training. Oh my gosh, you can give them a, a, an incentive, a bonus. I was actually just talking to, some, talking to somebody yesterday who had their staff had gone through sales training and, uh, and the flower prep school, and they were really good at what they're doing. The pay for that employee was $14 an hour. Okay, so which is, you know, it's below the 15 for Target, but it's 14 an hour. But the sales incentive and the design incentives put them up at a higher pay scale. So she looked at that from the year of 2020 with that $14 an hour person with the bonuses, put that all together and divided it out. How much were they making per hour? And it was $24 an hour that that employee ended wow. up making for 2020. So, and the, the thing is, the shop owner was thrilled because they were being very productive. They were selling, they had great customer service and the employee was happy and so were the, the customers. So again, you know, that's real opportunity that you have for your potential new hires to talk to them about that is, you know, it, this is all I can pay hourly wage, but my gosh, we have some great incentive bonuses based on your, you know, your ability. So yeah, I think that's it. That's awesome. That is so, and I know I've talked to many shops that they love to pay out incentives. They're so excited for their employees. Yeah. Because they, they they're getting more money. The store is getting more money. You're getting more happy customers. I mean, it's just a win-win for everyone. Right. You're, you're making more money with less employees and the, and the, um, the employees are happy to do it because they're like, Oh my God, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Onboarding process. Oh, wait, we've got a question here. Oh yeah. Stacy says, Stacy Edwards says that she pays incentive bonuses by cash every Monday. Yeah. That's a great idea. They love, they love cash. I mean, who doesn't, right? Who doesn't love to watch? And that knowing every week, Ooh, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? That would be for me. I would want to try to beat everybody else in the room. <laughs> Miss competitive one. Yes, exactly. So, all right. Onboarding process, training solutions. Yeah. You just really want to set yourself up for success. You have to have a list of everything that needs to be done, assign the person to that with no excuses. So let's look through, look what that, see what that looks like. When I look at design, I'm looking for a design assistant, right? If I have a design assistant, they could move into being a designer, 
but my designer is good. I need somebody to help them be more successful. So I'm going to have to make sure that the person has the knowledge of the product. They have to know the difference between a carnation and a rose and a lisianthus and, and that. They also have to know, you know, what is crown and glory? What, what is um, DCD? What are the products that we typically use in the flower shop day in and day out? That's something sometimes we just kind of skim over. I'm like, eh, whatever, you know, they'll, they'll pick it up. You got to set them up for success from the beginning care and handling of flowers, even washing buckets correctly. Tools and techniques of the trade is what we have from cutting using a floral knife, the correct way to use a floral knife, cutting stems, cutting them at an angle, and why you need to do that. It's not just this is how you do it, but the whys behind it. How to make a bow. And there's more than one way to make a bow. You've got to show them a couple ways and let them practice to become more proficient at those. How do you take care of a green plant when it comes in? Um, prepping containers, even if you're doing just water in vases, how much uh, flower food should go in there and how do you do that? What about greening? You need to give them basics of the elements and principles of design. They need to know how to copy a picture, right? Make a, roses, three, six dozen in a vase. And then also being able to take a look at a recipe and be able to complete a, a design. So those are just some things that those are specifics that you want to be able to have that design assistant know how to do to set them up for success. And so if you're just wanting to hire a salesperson, um, and maybe you want a salesperson that uh, could maybe move into design assistant. You know, a lot of times you can sort of create both of those. So here's things you're going to want to think about when you're onboarding. How do they take that order? How does your POS system work? How does it connect with your phone? All of the nuances about that. You want to make that's that's probably one of the hardest things. Once they get that down, then you can go on. Well, it might not be hard for some people, right? That would be hardest for me. All the other stuff this is the fun stuff. A lot of people would think that's reverse, right? Basic knowledge of flowers. This is something I think a lot of shop owners just assume that people coming to work in a flower shop know basic plants, basic flowers. They don't. They don't. Not all of them. Some of them might, but a many of them don't. Make sure you have, I don't know, printed out or you have things labeled in your storefront as far as this is the such and such plant. It's a popular one. We always have people buying that. This is a peace plant. It's a big, like, you need to make sure all of this is part of the onboarding because the minute they start the job answering the phone, it's going to hit them. And they're going to be going, can you hold on? I got a lot of, I got questions. And you don't want that if you can help it. Number two, how do you treat a customer? How do you treat someone that walks in the store versus how do you treat somebody that calls on the phone? Some of you may be a shop that you actually want them to be able to wait on families that come in for, for funeral flowers. If so, you need to make sure they're trained in that. They might not know sympathy flowers are different than everyday flowers. A daily checklist. This is so helpful, especially for new hires. Have something in the back or by your POS. It's somewhere that has a list of however many things you would like the, them to do every single day. Maybe it's something like look in the cooler when you first get here, make sure we have a variation of colors and sizes. If not, maybe go talk to the designers and see if there's something that they need to make. Whatever it is, make sure it's written down so that they're not common, coming to you. Oh, what else was I supposed to do today? Make it easy for them to succeed. Make sure they understand how do you sell plants? What are buzzwords for plants? How do you sell flowers? What are buzzwords for flowers? Knowing what types of customers walk in your store. Your new employees, they need to be able to know uh, when there's someone calls, how to make sure they know if it's a return customer. Um, they need to know if it's a grumpy customer that calls you every once in a while. So how do they know that? They got to read people before you can sell to them. 
Uh, how do you handle a dissatisfied customer? Many of you want them to go immediately to you, which I understand that, but there might be a time you're on a phone or you're not there and they're going to have to diffuse a situation for a few minutes. They need skills to do that. Um, and, and knowing what's on the website, they need to be familiar with what's on your website. What are your most popular things on the website? Um, and what are the things you don't want them to sell <laughs> that just might happen to be on your website? The last thing I just wanted to say is different styles and uh, styles of design. What's trending? Um, is it airy and flowy? Is it green with a ton of foliage? Is it tall and traditional? These are all those little things that they need to know that these are words. They need to put these words in their daily language so they can sell better flowers. Yeah, all so important. And so many times we get overwhelmed because there's so much to do, but you know, one little bite at a time, right? So right. set yourself up with for excess, have no excuses. And so Ellie, I, I, we were kind of talking about that internal training and what needs to be done. Talk, talk to us about how about if we want to outsource that? Yeah. So I think that was great information, girls. Um, and that is, if you want to take it on yourself, if you want to, you know, do it the way that you did it, right, Vonda? That's how many times, mm -hmm. uh, but there is another way that we wanted to talk about. So, and that is to outsource the part that you can, the time consuming part. So if we go to the next slide and click, we wanted to talk for a moment about prep school. Just open for enrollment yesterday, I believe. Yeah, yesterday. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you can go and visit this site. It's learn.flowerclick.com. But I just wanted to talk for a minute, like what's all included and how this can really help you and your team. So as you know, the cus your customers are your livelihood, right? They, you depend on them and they really need that great customer service and quality work, all of those good things that set you apart from the competition. But you also know that your team is your biggest asset. So you need to make sure that they are properly trained, that there's synergy within the team, that everybody is, you know, has those standards for how things are done um, and to really keep it at that level of quality and great customer service, everything that you wanna be known for, um, that depends on your team. It's not just you, you can be amazing, but if, if the six people on your team don't have those skills honed in on, um, you know, that's where it gets a little messy. So next slide. So we have prep school. Um, in the past, and I'm sure a lot of you have been on our webinars and everything, um, we've had flower prep school, which was launched last year. Um, we've had sales prep school, which was launched earlier this year. And now we've combined them because, you know, we've talked to people who have both and it really is that all in one training tool that is just so good for onboarding and just to have in their back pocket whenever they need to teach somebody how to make a bow or how to talk on the phone or all of those little things. Um, so this is kind of the complete package. So flower prep school, sales prep school, and then we also have like that success kit that's like a physical thing that's mailed to you, which has gotten an incredible response just to have like a physical binder with like a hundred pages of notes and details and all of that. Um, that's one of my favorite parts is just to have it physically there with the apron and things like that. Um, so first flower prep school, I just wanted to give you kind of a little insight into what the actual course looks like because I know, you know, it's a lot to, to hear about it, but you want to see what's in it. Um, so if you go to the next one, this is just a screenshot of kind of what the interface looks like of the course. Um, and, you know, it's all videos, there's workbooks and handouts and everything. It can be run on any device. So whether you have a phone or computer, iPad, tablet, whatever, you can access it anywhere. This is another one. So it's a lot. So for flower prep school, what I love about it is that we take Lori through the course from beginning <laughs> to end. And so, and Lori's not, you know, she didn't 
work in a flower shop traditionally. So a lot of these skills she did not know. Um, so I love that, you know, you can see her progression from like the little details of knowing what DCD is and, and the little hacks on making sure you're using the right product and then getting into processing and getting into actually designing. Um, she didn't have too many band-aids when she was cutting with a knife. I have, look, I have one now. <laughs> I think one of the really cool comments somebody said was when they had their employee go through flower prep school, they said, oh, I kind of feel sorry for the story. And I was I like, I don't know if it's a cool comment, but yeah. They were, they, I just thought, but it made them feel not stupid, it's right? It's yeah. like, I feel like I'm smarter than she yeah. was. Like, I picked it up way. Ask all the right questions, which I think is important too. Yeah, for sure. So this is the whole curriculum. Lori wanted me to make sure to put the curriculum on there. We also have some special bonus lessons um, that aren't on this about bundles and different things like that. So with this grid, is I learned a grid. Yep, you learned how to use a grid, all kinds. Oh yeah, that, that's a new video too. That's a new so video. all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but this is basically, I mean, you know, you can take a screenshot of this and you can teach, you know, you can teach your staff this yourself. Mm -hmm. That's like we're not you know we want to give you all the information we can but this is that automated thing where oh you have an order come in for a single bud vase with a rose and this person's never made that just go watch this video and and practice and you can repeat repeat the video instead of repeating yourself right mm -hmm. i think that's huge um okay and then this was a cute testimonial Lori, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, so this was, <clears throat> I was on the phone with Abby and she told me, no, we were, yeah, we were doing something on a Zoom or something and she told me this and she actually, she even got a little choked up because it was, <clears throat> she she's in both of our courses. She does our sales training and she does our flower prep. And she just said that she was, she has picnic tables outside of her store, which is kind of cool. I would love a picnic table outside. <laughs> and she and her manager, so the two top level people were sitting out there and she was eating her lunch and they were kind of having a little meeting. And she said that they looked in because she's got a lot of windows and she could see one of her employees who's fairly new was working on, I think, was it funeral work, Fonda, that she had never done before. She didn't actually believe in herself, but she had gone through our design school and she started, she was working on that. Another one was on the phone, taking an order. And the girl that's on the phone is the one that typically hates answering the phone and that she's gone through. And then somebody else was doing, and she said her heart just swelled up because she's like, wow, I can take 15 minutes and see the fruits of my labor. They've all been through the training. It was just a beautiful moment for her and her manager because they've worked hard implementing our training. So it's not like they just sent it to them and said, okay, do it. And everything magically worked. Like they worked hard to make sure every staff member went through the steps they needed to of the curriculum so that they can be taken basically to the next level. Yep. Well, and they all took the program, even yes. the people who had been there for yes. a long time. They all went through they it. They all went through it. It's like when I trained somebody, I forgot to tell them about all the products available. All yes. this. And so I think that was kind of the beauty of it too. I was like, wow, you know, somebody who's been through it and you just, you skip some points for sure. Right. But then let's go on to sales prep school. Yes. Sales prep school, same platform, same look all different content. A lot of this is Lori going deep on, again, which I think is important. We do it in flower prep school too, but the why behind something and how it all starts from within. So she gets a little bit, um, puts her psychology hat Philosophical? on. Philosophical? No, I, it's just, I think I wanted to set the tone of the training early on. Um, yeah. And we all, just so you know, we all hate the word training because Vonda says it's like we're teaching dogs, but there is no other word, right? To, right. to use it. I, we try to set the tone in the beginning of this to make them understand how you as the owner or manager, whoever hired them saw something in them or they would not be sitting there at a computer watching training. So they need to see value in their job because they'll be better employees if they do. Absolutely. 
Oh, and that's that, a beautiful picture. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a mix. It's a mix of, you know, Lori talking of um, screen shares of different things. And then all of us, us three girls chatting about different topics. So, um, and then a lot of role playing, which is important. Uh, mm -hmm. And so here is the curriculum for that yeah. as well. What I do want to say about you stay right on this slide is fine, but one I want to say my favorite thing about the um, flower prep school, the design training that every single person in the shop should do it, even if you're not going to be a designer because it talks about the buckets, it talks about the sprays. But the other thing it does is Vonda sits down with her friend who's a shop owner and they talk through an entire calendar year of a shop owner. And I have heard so much feedback from owners say that is incredibly valuable because they didn't even think, they just assumed hiring a new employee that employee's gonna know Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, all of this is crazy. Like they don't. They don't know that people that aren't in this industry don't really think through that process. So it is, it is one of the most watched videos of the whole thing. And I just, I, if again, you don't have to buy this, but make sure, be mindful when you do hire someone, make sure they understand what the months look like which ones are crazy, which ones are no way can you take off work this month <laughs> and this one, July, go, you know. Right. Yep. Yeah, and this was another from the same conversation, I think, about yeah. um, from Abby. It's just like the approach to the whole system mm -hmm. um, and getting into different personality types that your customers might have. And that's a whole nother conversation, but yeah. um, yeah. She said that they now have, you know, they'll joke because we talk about the different personality types of customers, the four basic ones, and they'll get off the phone and they're like, ah, oh, it was a director and everybody. And it just becomes this running joke in their store. And it also helps kind of mold you guys together even more because only the, you and your employees know what you're referring to. Yep. And another thing I just thought of is like, this is, you know, for the person who maybe doesn't have the skill set and how they were talking before about um, advertising for a job, like this is a great perk for somebody who wants to learn, yeah. right? So you say, we're including the training, everything that right. you need, um, you know, that's, it's, it's super valuable. Yeah. It's like going out and getting, doing college classes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so from, from the, perspective candidates perspective. I just think that could be super valuable. Yeah, I agree. So this is just, you know, reiterating, you know, make the education as an ex <clears throat> incentive because we know and studies will show that the person who is continued to be, to learn and grow is a person who's going to stay with you. And mm -hmm. so from the very beginning, from the hire, as Ellie just said, to you know, the person who's been there a long time, even though they're going through, they're maybe relearning something new or it's just reiterating. Oh yeah, I knew that. I remember that now. And those are super important. Yep. So here we have kind of an overview of what's in sales prep school and flower prep school both. That's right. These were just a few testimonials that I grabbed from the website. Um, Jennifer liked the videos on how to reset. Uh, we have daily affirmations. And she said the videos are sometimes humorous, mostly thanks to Lori. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Janet said it's it's the great tool to take an employee from zero to 60 in an efficient manner, fast manner. Uh, and Jeannie said this course helps me Im improve and assist in training my staff to perform well, helps me train new staff. And we just, we love her and yeah. yeah. So then here's the question, right? And again, a different elephant in the room, how much does this training cost? If I were to outsource this and have, have uh, the flower, uh, flower 
uh, Flower Click Prep School, do it instead. You're looking at $3,100 for non-members, people who are not members of Flower Click, or uh, four payments of eight forty nine dollars each. So, you know, you're getting the, the two training, training programs, you're getting a private community, you're getting group, what couple, uh, every other month, we're doing a program where people can come to a Zoom meeting and we're gonna have um, a subject and then people can ask questions, we can do check-ins, which is really valuable. And then like Ellie said, that physical workbook, which is invaluable. People have told us that that workbook is worth it all because it has that those checkpoints and everything that need to be done from there. Now, if you're a member of Flower Click, there's a special price. Any of you Flower Click members who are on here, it's $23.92 for of one payment or the four payments of $6.49. So if you are not a Flower Click member, you might consider reaching out to see what it is to become a member and what that entails. And because you'll be able to save that money right away by being a member. So think about the value you get. And all this information, like Ellie said, is on the website. But I think the important thing is knowing, I, I don't want you to go, oh my gosh, we cannot afford that. That's, that's a lot of money. Education has value. And that's what you have to realize is the better the education, the more value it brings. And we know this is a complete training program. This was developed by flower shop owners, myself and a couple other flower shop owners, Julie Poehler is one. And we walked through this and we said, you know, when we've trained these hundreds of people, I wanna say hundreds, many, many people to work in a flower shop, what did we do right? And what did we miss? And what we've done is make it complete from beginning to end. And I think that's why this is so important. And it takes time away from you doing it yourself and puts it into uh, the professionals to do it. So being part of one click is being a flower click member. And so it's like a full website management program where we have images, we do the work for you. Cami, you can see is on the call and she is the one who runs one click. And it really takes things off your plate and puts it on ours that we can help you in so many different ways. And we can get you more information about that if you're interested. But I wanted to talk, do a little bit of a breakdown because if you purchase as a non-member and it's $21.92 and you have one employee, it costs that much. But chances are that you're gonna have more employees go through it. The program is what they call, we call evergreen, which means that if you buy it, you have it forever. And as we update and which we already have flower prep school, we've already put some more videos in when we update that, then you get the new stuff as it comes out. So it's a one-time payment that you can have to train four employees. See how the breakdown is, eight employees. Over the years, 10 employees, depending on how many employees you have, the less it comes per employee. So if you're looking right now to hire one employee, you'll want to hire that person and get them onboarded, but you'll also want your existing staff to go through. So everyone's on the same page. Mm -hmm. So it's less per employee when you're doing that. Um, and then you can see the breakdown if they're a flower click member, the difference in that. So it kind of breaks down to taking the time and the commitment to properly onboard someone onto your shop. Like I'm going to hire somebody who has a desire to learn and I really have to take them step by step to get them ready to work in my flower shop or take that opportunity cost and say, you know what? It's not that much for me to do this because wow, in one month I can get them ready rather than after Christmas. You know, we look at eight, after Valentine's day, you're looking at eight months. That's the big difference. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking as you were saying this, now that you have it by employees, which I love, I didn't, wasn't sure. I didn't know you were going to do that. Um, you think of when you first purchase it that first year and you get all of your employees now, you run them through it. And then you know, maybe for that first six months, whoever else is coming in from there on out, you have everyone under one roof on the same page as far as policy, procedure, 
personality, whatever. When you have to hire someone new, you just tap into one of those people that already know how to do it and go, hey, can you get them hooked up on the onboarding process? You don't have to do it anymore. And I think that's pretty cool. I mean, talk about a time saver. I just want to chime in um, two things. Number one, Janet, who you were you were quoting her earlier, she she chatted in and said, um, when your average sale increases, it pays for itself. So she's talking about, I think, the one click program, but also the training, um, because you're going to yeah. get a higher average. Yeah. Average. She's the sales training because her other phone sales, their average sale jumped up. And so, yeah, oh, for sure. Very good point, Janet. I know. Thanks, Janet. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Go ahead, Ellie. Nope, that was it. Just wanted to give you this, the, the wrap up on prep school here. And um, I think there's one more slide. Yeah, so if you want to enroll, just head to learn.flowerclick.com. And um, if you want to talk more in depth, if you have other questions, if you want to see more, um, just email Lori at flowerclick.com and she will either call you or you guys can do a Zoom or however your best mode of communication is. And the other thing uh, Lori and I were talking to you about when we were going through this is maybe they already have flower prep school or they already have sales prep school and they want to join the other just again email lori because our special pricing if you already have one you'll have a, um, a special discount to get the other one so that's a really good possibility if you already did sales prep school and it's like oh my gosh but i really am intrigued with flower prep school i think that'd be a great thing for me just send us an email and we'll give you all that information as well great right. We just, our mission statement at Flower Click is this, simplicity, service, and solutions. That's in a nutshell, right? Yep, that's it. Just so sorry we don't have a big long paragraph, just three words. If it doesn't align under, fall under one of those, we're not gonna do it. After years of working with shops, I think all of us understand that it's a big job to have a flower shop. And you have so many different hats. You have so much you have to do. And our responsibility is to make it easier on you. You love what you do. We want you to continue to love what you do and be successful. So here we have it, Lori, that checklist of tasks that you maybe you could outsource to make it easier on yourself. So these are your questions. Well, these are questions that you ask yourself when you are writing down what do I, what, what can I delegate? What can I outsource as Vonda says that, that is costing me more in time and mental capacity than not. So number one, what drains you quicker than anything else? So every one of us have something, Vonda put mine up there, spreadsheets. Nothing drains my energy faster then if I have to look at spreadsheets for period long periods of time, what takes me two hours to do on a spreadsheet probably takes Vonda 45 minutes. And I'm not even kidding. It's just the way our brains work. So for me, it would be if I was having to do scheduling and or things like that, it just wouldn't work out. But what, what ignites me, what fuels me? Well, having a brain se brainstorming session with Ellie that I live for because we come up with some crazy stuff and out of all of it, maybe two of them end up, <laughs> we work on it and it's great. And I love that. I love idea meetings. Um, but what do you love? Do you love wedding consults? Do you love so many shops that I talk to just really, and I love this about them. They love sympathy work because it's, important and they just feel like they're helping a family or you know what is it what do you love to do um the last question is that question that the answer really just needs to be between you and god because you don't even have to say it out loud but write it down is this something that you really wish you could be good at you want to be good at but honestly somebody else does it so much better an example would be photography. 
And I say that because I talk to so many shops that are like, yeah, I, I'm going to do my own stuff. I can't wait. And they're, you know, getting the camera. It never really all comes together because it takes so much time and it's crazy expensive. And you have to have everything perfect for them to turn out well. We joke about when we do photo shoots, right? Like what I see in the little white box that Ellie's getting ready to take a picture of and what the picture actually looks like are always different. Cause I'm like, yeah, it looks fine. It looks great. And you take the picture and you're like, Ooh, is that what it, so that kind of stuff, it's hard. What do you wish? But maybe someone else just, the reality is somebody else does it better and you need to pass it off. Think about those questions and they're really going to help you clarify what you need to pass off. And like you've mentioned here, if you're not sure, because sometimes you're like, oh, I'm not sure, maybe I think I can do this. Yeah. Ask, ask a trusted employee. Yeah. Sometimes right. they know you right. better than you know right. yourself. What do you think I'm good at? They're, just ask that. I think it's a healthy question. And then tell them what you think they're good at. Another one I think a lot of people want to be good at is social media. But the, the thing is, it's hard and it's time consuming because there's a trick to it. And there are some people that are naturally going to figure that out and just love to do it. And it, but if you're not that type of person, oh yeah, here's examples. I forgot we wrote down. Like, mm -hmm. so, yep. Yeah. Yep. And all kinds of different ones, you know, like you yeah. said, some things ignite you like well, a big one on here teaching slash training. I mean, some of y'all, let's be honest, you might not be the best person in the world to onboard and train a new employee. Maybe it's just not, you don't have the patience. Um, farm it out. If not to us, farm it out to another employee that is naturally better at teaching because that sets the person up for success. Yeah. And we have down website because so many times you're like, yeah, just let somebody else take care of it. And, you know, you could be losing money. Like Janet said, if somebody else is doing it for you, can you have a higher average sale? Can you have better customer satisfaction? Those are things that you really need to look at and say, yeah, I, I want to do it. I want to do my own pictures. I want to take care of my website, but maybe that's something that you would be better off off. So, mm -hmm. you know, outsourcing. Right. So I think at the end of the list, um, we're, we've got a lot of ground covered and we hope that you came away with some really good ideas for that help wanted um, and to ways to really get a new employee from where you can look to how to place an ad to get them um, scheduled for success with an onboarding process. And do we have any questions then, ladies? No, I think we're good. I have a few that people, they've actually, I've been getting some emails. I'll just respond to them because I know we're way over time and yeah. um, it was just a lot to cover. We did. We did. We had a lot to cover. So again, 